Hi, I'm Stan Phelps. I'm David Rendell. And we want to chat, give you a sneak peek of what's coming up. Pink Goldfish 2.0. 2.0. Um, yeah, we're excited about it. So the original book came out in 2018, 18. right? So it's a little over two and a half years old. It came out on April 1st. We had a lot April of fun Fool's with Day. That. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Some people, we, we pretended that Amazon wouldn't let us um, sell it and they'd taken it back off their system. And some people a year later still didn't think it, it was of, available. We did too good of a job. <laughs> too good of a job. Backfired. And then uh, the audiobook came out on Audible January, or no, we recorded it in January of 2019. Right. So there actually was some additional stuff that we put in the audiobook yep. that didn't make it in the original. So let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on in 2.0 that's new. And this is something that you had in Freak Factor and we yeah. overlooked it or we just didn't think it fit. And it absolutely does. Tell them about attack. Yeah, so we have four A's in the book that you need to, uh, you need to appreciate and you need to assess and you need to align and you need to amplify. And now we're going to attack. So the way you attack is you look at your biggest competitor's strength and then you look at the assessment that we provide and you see the corresponding weakness. And then you look at uh, what you see as your weakness and you look for that corresponding strength um, and you use it to attack their weakness. So you use the upside of your weakness to attack the downside of their strength. So a simple example is you feel like your biggest competitor is quite literally your biggest competitor. They're huge, you're small, they're, they've been around for a long time, you're brand new. Well, what does that mean? That means they're gonna be slower because they're so big you're so small, but that means you can be faster, you can move more quickly, you're more right. agile. So you use your agility to beat their slowness instead of feeling like, oh my gosh, they're gonna beat us every time because they're so big and we're so small. So you look at the upside of your weakness and you use it to attack the downside of their strength. And that's how the assessment can really help you come up with new strategies. This isn't so much taking what's, what's existing, which is what a lot of the book is about. What are your existing strengths and weaknesses? This might be looking to build a new weakness or it's not just looking at yourself and how to kind of uh, work in your market. It's looking at how to take on the competition and really do right. something that might help you you win when it would otherwise seem like there's no way you could win because they're too big and you're too small. That's just one simple example of attack. What's the next thing we're going to add to the new book? So one of the one of the concepts that we talk about that really grounds this idea is called Kintsugi that we did in the original book. It's a story that you and I both share when we do keynotes. It's a Japanese term. That's this idea of like illuminating your flaws, yeah. right? So stuff that you already have you want to figure out ways to illuminate and bring them to life. There is kind of a con contrasting Japanese term that's called wabi sabi. And this is the idea of intentional imperfection. So maybe not something that you already have, but a conscious choice. And the real quick definition is that it's the idea that nature is beautiful, but nature is imperfect. Yeah. And, and so it's the idea of maybe creating, if you're a craftsman, maybe a little bit of a nick to avoid trying to be perfect because imperfect is better than perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Like my friend Jeremy Pound says, uh, different is better than better. Um, and what Wabi Sabi is doing is creating intentional imperfection um, because perfection, we just, uh, we got a Seth Godin quote, we're going to include that recently you wrote a blog post that perfection is sort of boring. Right. Um, so that's Wabi Sabi. The next thing we're adding is we're adding to our framework. So our framework currently is F-L-A-W-S-O-M. Flossom, right. And we're going to add an E to that exposing. We're going to talk about the importance of honesty and transparency. You can't flaunt, you can't parade without shame if you're not even willing to admit it. Um, if you can't even be honest about having it, then you're certainly not going to be advertising it. And so we're going to add an entire section uh, to the framework exposing and talk about the importance of, trans, uh, of, of transparency, of authenticity, and being uh, not just being honest with others, but even starting by being honest internally, being honesty with yourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. In the organization. Uh, and one more. Another one, um, just to finish it up, we're going to throw some B2B in the book. That's something that people have asked for. Yeah, we get so, that question a lot. Is, yeah, is there B2B? yeah, hey, I'm, a, I'm B2B. Can I apply this? 
obviously when we did the project over 300 examples, the majority of which are B to C, but we've got great ones that we're putting in the upcoming uh, version. One of my favorites. No, tell them the old one, HVLS. Oh, we'll start it used to be called new. HVLS, high velocity, <laughs> low speed fans. I mean, how sexy uh, is that? High velocity, low speed. They, but you might know them, <laughs> big ass fans, right? Yeah. Um, so those are four things. We're gonna come back and do another video. We're having a lot of fun putting 2.0 together. Um, when we come back, we'll maybe talk about some of the new examples, but till then, stay weird, flaunt it.